look at them prime babies. What's going on everyone? It's Kelly here. We are on the blue water off of Sebastian Inlet. We're in about 220 foot of water. We got Matt baiting up our first grouper rod with a croaker. Ooh, prime bait. All right, we got Captain Joe here, man in the vessel. We got Chris Bondi, who my brother and I uh, went to school with since middle school. It's been a while. It's been a while, it's right? While. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have another Chris over here. So we got two Chris's on the boat. My brother, Tyler, which you guys already know, Captain Joe and Matt. We're gonna be doing a lot of fishing today, but first up to bat, we're gonna try to pluck a couple grouper off the bottom right now. So we got two rods rigged up, one over here, one over there. I'm gonna have Tyler and Chris on the grouper rods. Yeah, hey, Chris, it. Chris and Tyler, y'all ready? Bondi, over here, buddy. This is gonna be interesting. We got Tyler on rod number one. We got Bondi on rod number two. Bondi. Get to the bottom as soon as possible. Bondi, have you ever caught a grouper? Negative. <laughs> <laughs> so I was told it's gonna be fun. Yes. You need to really have some manpower when you reel in this That's fish. What I hear. We got Chris over there with the Johnny jig, jigging on the bow of the boat. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Johnny Jigs. If you guys vertical jig or inch, are interested in any jigs, you can use promo code Island Key to save 10% off your Johnny Jigs. Now we're just waiting on a bite. Still going down. Just hit bottom, click it, and then give it a couple little reels. Yeah, it right there. Perfect. Make sure you feel the bottom with the lead. Make sure you watch that lead hit the bottom. There it is. See it? Watch it hit the bottom. So right now that weight is hitting the bottom, and you just kind of have to work with the reel a little bit, work with the rod tip and the weight, because you want it on the bottom, but you don't really want it bouncing off the bottom too much, because that might disrupt the fish. But once that rod tip goes. Do, 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 do. You better start reeling because <laughs> grouper are no joke. Fish, fish, fish. fish reel, 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 reel. Reel, 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 reel. Smooth, all smooth, the whole way. <laughs> if he's pulling, you don't have to reel. Now reel, reel, reel. reel, reel. So when the boat tips up, when it tips down, reel. Look at that. You guys did pretty good. We're a min uh, three minutes into the episode so far. <laughs> Heck yeah. I told him like, listen, if you want to make this flawless, we need to get a hookup in the intro. You got it, you got it. Come on, Ty Ty. It could be a red snapper. Yeah, it could be a red snapper too. But we'll find out when we get it up to the boat. As long as the sharks don't tag along, we should be good. Easy, no jinx. Easy with S word. <laughs> no S words on the boat. No <laughs> we got our good luck corn muffin. Ready to roll. <laughs> we had corn muffin for breakfast. We got oh, color. Snapper. Uh, snapper. Uh, rudder. Almaco. Almaco. That's a sandwich. Go 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 go. Oh, easy. Nice and smooth. Go, 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 go. So we got an Almaco in the boat. Not the target species, but they make good cool, sandwiches. Right? Yeah, make good sandwiches. Chris is on. There you go, Bondi. There he is. There he is. Nice and smooth. You know? There you go. Nice and smooth the whole way up. I think it's another Almaco. Yeah. Bouncing like that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There you go. Uh, it's it's a little feisty for a grouper, I feel like. Yeah, he is. But you never know. Yeah, never know. That's right. Chris, I'm, I'm kind of mm -hmm. trying to stay with Chris here. Quick picture of this one. How big is he? How big is he? Woo! There you go. <laughs> you want to keep him? You don't want him, do you, Tyler? Or get something better? Let him go. Yeah, we got a whole day. There we go. I don't know. He's still on there, but he's not fighting. Yeah, that That's might be a good sign. sign. Oh, there go. He, he was probably just swimming oh, up. Oh, man. Oh, that's what I got here, you. Woo, baby. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, Woo, smokes. Don't come back down just yet. Okay. That was a honker of a bait. Your arm's tired yet? Oh, I see color. Oh, 
Come on. There Come on, is. grouper. Um, uh, uh, whoa. Is it an AJ or an Amico? It is a Rotorfish. not target species. Get them out of the way and then you get to the grouper. <laughs> Alright boys, that was just a uh, warm-up. Warm up. Warm up. Nice yeah, warm up. You know what's good. Now you to work the reel. Warming up the guns, working the reel. Y'all right here. Read the back of this man's shirt. Southern Fortune Fishing Tournament. These guys are hosting a year-round 365 days a year fishing tournament for the southern states. So you got Texas, Florida, up to North Carolina. You can fish in the Gulf of Mexico and the Keys and the Atlantic Ocean. It's a super, super dope tournament. I'm gonna go into detail about it a little bit later in the video. So I got Bonnie's first AJ right there in real Amico. Woo! When do you get your picture? Are you releasing them or keeping them? Uh, well, are we releasing yeah. them? Yeah, I mean, unless you guys want them. I don't want them. All right, we'll release bad. it. They're not bad eating, but you know. All right, just toss them back in. Uh, just head first and just put them right back in the water. There you go. There he goes. So we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We started off with two croakers on each rod, but now we're gonna do a croaker on Tyler's rod and a pinfish on Bondi's rod. When I say Bondi's name's Chris, but we're gonna call him Bondi because there's two Chris's on the boat. You get hit on that one, Tyler. You better be ready, buddy. You got the big croaker yep. on. Big boy. Oh, my back's gonna hurt. It's a live one, too, Bonnie. Get them off in there. Go on the bottom. Yeah. You're gonna get hit. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. Bite my bait. Shout out, Luis Resendez. Bite my bait. Chris Bondi, since we're waiting for a bite, did you want to give anyone a shout out in today's video? Yeah, actually, uh, I wanted to say hi to my mom. Uh, <laughs> she really wanted, she knew I was doing this, so uh, I wanted to give her her five seconds of fame. Mother, I love you. And uh, yeah. That awesome, was a, awesome. 27 miles off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she's not too happy about that. But, uh, we'll make hey, it do. We got a good crew. Christina's a great lady. She thinks she's at work. Um, she thinks he's at work, but uh, that's how they do it over there at the uh, commercial Baron Real Estate. They uh, work hard and part or have fun harder, party harder. <laughs> Sometimes you need to play hooky and go fishing for a day. Tyler just hooked into a fish and halfway up it got sharked. Funny thing is we saw Remora hanging out around the boat about four minutes before that happened. Oh, Come it's on. It's a bigger one though. It's, a, it's an AJ. Yeah. Think it's an AJ? Yeah. Come on. You see a head shaking like that? It's oh, all yeah. Real bad like that. You want to get some? You want to get, get some? I got it. This is what keeps you. These rods let you fight an AJ oh. and then a grouper right after. Not tired at all. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Tack see fish. that? Yeah, that rod. What kind of rod is it? That, that reel is a Talica 50. And the rod is a Shimano Therese, yeah. Therese. The bent butt. So the combo with the bent butt saves you. There he is. Oh, hello. There's the Remora. What is it? Is that one in there? Almaco. Man, is that all that's out here? Flip them that's in AJ. here. AJ? Yeah, yeah small AJ. Here, don't release them yet. <laughs> There's all those Amberjack right now. Go down, Joe. Yeah. Wait, Go let's get this. let's get an underwater release okay. of this Amberjack. So we took a little break from grouper fishing. The grouper just were not biting. We got some Almaco Jacks and an Amberjack. So we went ahead and moved about eight miles. 
And now we are snapper fishing. So that is our goal right now. I went ahead and threw down a Johnny jig because we, we were having some good marks on the, uh, the fish finder. So we'll see. The boys in the back are getting all the chum ready. We're gonna be chumming up these snapper. So we're not gonna be fishing for the snapper on the bottom. We're gonna be fishing mid-water column up to the surface for these snapper, which I've never technically done. That's kind of cool. Every time I catch snapper, it's always on the bottom. So that's how they do it over here in Sebastian. So we're out here chumming, just drifting our baits back into the slick of our chum. And I just started reeling in my bait, like, hey, I don't know, I'm gonna reel in. We got a little snapper, probably a little mangrove it's feeling like. Alright, we got leader. Nice mangrove. Oh, it's a little, it's a little red grouper. It's a baby red grouper. Coming up on the chum. Oh. Look at that. Here, oh, chum catch. <laughs> I was not expecting a little red grouper. Look how cute he is. Look how cute that thing is. He would be perfect for a fish tank if we can actually keep him in a fish tank. Don't bite me. I'm gonna get pliers because they do have some teeth and I know if I stick my fingers in there, he's definitely gonna chomp down on me. Jump off, we'll go ahead and we'll hey, Bobby. Get it. Just close the bail and reel down. What a pretty little fella. I know, he's so pretty. Put it right in an aquarium. I literally just had that thing. I'm like, he's a perfect aquarium fish. All right, Mr. Grouper, you ready to go back? No, we got Give him a kiss. All right, so before we get into snapper fishing, I want to talk a little bit about the tournament that these guys are running. It's called the Southern Fortune Fishing Tournament, and it's super cool. I'm actually very intrigued by it when they first told me about it. It is all year long. There is 30 top fish. Nope. 30, that you could, that you could place, place in. in. So there's 30 species, 30 different categories, there's 30 first place winners. You can register in any of the eight states going from Texas down to Key West and Key West up to North Carolina. We have 33 weigh-in locations all through Florida to the Carolinas, around to Texas. And if you register in any one of the states, you can go to any of the states, the eight states, and you can weigh in at any location within 96 hours of your catch. Okay, so what if you catch a fish in the Bahamas and come back to Florida, like a day trip? You can come back and weigh it in as long as everything is by our rules in the U.S. Like I know over in the Bahamas they have different rules, but when you come back to the U.S., it has to be U.S. rules. So in season here, it has to be, even though it could be in season in the Bahamas, it could be out of season in our state. Yeah, so you obviously have to follow the seasons, but like you said, if you catch a fish in the Bahamas, you can technically bring it back to Florida and weigh it in for the tournament. Though. Yes. Okay, so we perfect. have uh, our long range boats down in uh, the west coast and down the Keys, like the Yankee Captain boat, mm -hmm. the American Patriot, those are long range boats. So we give everybody enough time to take their trip and get back. So we have a 96 hour window from the time of the first video and then from the second video at the weigh in location. So like I said, in years to come, when they have more and more people enter this tournament, those top cash prizes are just going to be more and more. So you're really, I mean, if you're an avid fisherman and you're out there catching fish anyway, like it's almost like, why not just enter the tournament? Yeah, you're out I there mean, catching fish. It's 365 days and you know, you know, fishermen know anytime you go fishing, it could be any day. I mean, just be in the right place at the right time if anybody's first place, you know. And you can't ever go out and say today's the day, but when you got 365 days, you get a good shot to fish around moons. You get a good time to fish the time of year. Good, good seasons. I mean, That's it gives the cool you a full brain. Yeah, like the whole year. Like I love that aspect of it, and especially because people work. You work a nine to five. You know what I mean? Like you can fish year round and place your fish in these categories. You can download our Southern Fortune app, and you can keep track of all the first place winners and everybody that's weighed in. You can also go on the app and you can see all of our weigh-in locations 
Um, so the app the and the rules. website yeah. have everything you need to need to know. Yes. The rules, the regulations, you know, what fish, the top 30 fish that are applicable for this contest. Yeah, you can see the top winners, so that's all super the fish. Cool. Yep. <laughs> so if you see someone's got a mutton snapper and the top mutton right now is 11 pounds, and you just catch a mutton snapper that's 13 pounds, you're like, boom, you know now you're in first place. Yep, exactly. That's so cool. you take the app, go anywhere, you know, you can see it at any time. So you can keep track of everybody and you know exactly what you're dealing with and what fish you've got to beat. So all the information for this tournament, I'm going to put in the link in the description below this video, the website, the app, and everything you need to know. I think I'm gonna enter this tournament as well. I mean, why not? If I'm out here on the water fishing, catching fish, you never know when you're gonna pull up that monster fish. That could win you a thousand bucks, or if not, two, three, four, depending on how many fish that you place in the tournament. So you guys check out the Southern Fortune Fishing Tournament in the link in the description below this video and check it out. Kelly's hooked up again. I'm just trying. He's swimming. Stop, 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 stop. Come around me. I think she's on the other side of you. These fish are not taking this bait like how I think they would. It's weird the way the current. I'm just trying to reel this fish up. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Sorry, I'm alright. I just gotta go. Yep. Come on, the right side, right side. What are you letting? Can I catch them off the fish? I'm trying to get this fish up above the bottom as much as I can. Hey, can you give me the net? So it doesn't go in a rock? Rock up. Woo. It's a little bit bigger than the that red that we just caught. Nothing huge. I'm gonna say a nice mangrove again. Looks like my get line. The, get the net, mutton. Oh, mutton. Yeah. First keeper mutton in the boat. Treja. There we go. That's probably 19, 20 inches. Look at them bars going down right there. I knew I had a little bit of tension. <laughs> You got one? Oh my gosh, you I've never seen there. one like that. You might as well drop down for a Two aquarium <laughs> fish. You guys can have the Sebastian Tyler, <laughs> come over here and show the camera doubled that up. fish you just got. Me and Tyler just doubled up on some snapper. <laughs> I just, Ice with I just Tyler. squeezed them and all the air came out of them from the real and quick. Yeah, oh, come on. They're breeding. I'll stand Shoot, behind that, you. That's all sperm. <laughs> oh, this is the mutton? Yeah, I see oh. it. Hey, we gotta get your boat dirty somehow, right? Oh, it's just dirty. All right, let's see. Hold him up. Hold him up, Ty. Come on. <laughs> Boom. A nice mangrove snapper and a keeper mutton. That's dinner. <laughs> so just from fishing enough, I could tell this is a legal mutton, but we're gonna go ahead and measure him for you guys, just so you can see. Nose him up right there. Oh, 20. 20 inches perfect. Awesome, yeah, they can totally see it. Yeah, bleed them out, Kelly. Well, we're gonna bleed them out, yeah, let's do that. So, nice bag. <laughs> Alright, so you bleed them out on the live well or over right here, this is the main one right here. So, what we're gonna do is bleed this fish out. Some people are adamant on bleeding out their fish. I personally like bleeding out my fish because I do think the quality of the meat gets better just because you don't have as much bloodline as you would if you were not to bleed out the fish which is pretty self-explanatory on smaller fish you can easily just stick your finger in their gill and just pull it right out but in this case i don't have any gloves and he's a little bit bigger we're just gonna use a knife to cut the throat and since this is going on youtube i'm not going to show you guys the bleeding process because youtube and blood does not mix <laughs> So we did a good deed. We picked up some trash out of the ocean. This balloon says feel better. And unfortunately, Chris has got the blues because it's a little bit tipsy out here. So Chris, this one's for you. Thank you. Feel better. <laughs> feel better. I already feel better. There you go. <laughs> there it is. That was like meant to be. Unfortunately, there's always one person who's a little seasick on the boat. Tell you what, killer. About halfway to the boat, he started fighting like he was actually something. There it is, baby. Oh. Bill, do you have some? Yeah. You got it. Oh, 
you got a big old lane. That's a bigger lane in. That's a keeper. Well, you gotta be eight. That's ceviche right there. there. That's a lane is. snapper. That's one of the best fish to make ceviche with. And they only gotta be eight inches. He's pushing 12, so we're good. Careful, he got mega teeth in there. What kind of teeth? Well, he swallowed the hook, so we're definitely sacrificing this guy oh, for some ceviche. So while we're waiting on that snapper bite, look what we got going on here. Ooh, we got some skirt steak, some fried chicken. We got it going on right now. I'm gonna stop you guys right here because I have so much footage fishing from this day that I have to make a second video. Now we did catch three more different kinds of species. However, I'm gonna take you guys back to the house where I'm gonna show you how to prepare a whole caught mangrove snapper in order to cook it whole. And in the next video, you guys will see us catch the mangrove snappers and a couple other fish that we did not expect to catch. It's the following day right now and we have a grown mangrove snapper here. Now, the boys we were fishing with yesterday says these are small mangrove snappers, but I think they're ginormous mangrove snappers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna flay the fish. I'm going to prepare this fish whole and cook it. There's three major steps you have to do when you prepare a fish whole. One, you have to gut the fish. Now on the boat, you guys already saw, I did gut this fish to inspect on what's inside the belly. Gut the fish. And then number two, you're going to degill the fish. Now, if you have a pair of like shears, you can use shears and just cut the gills out. It makes you it a little bit easier. But if you get close here, here's his gills. And then he has like a layer of skin right there. So if you just take your knife and just carve the gills out just like that. Pull them a little bit. Grip them with your left or right hand and just cut that right there. I wear gloves because it just makes it a whole lot easier to grip and rip. Have a gut bucket available so you can get rid of any stuff that you're not going to eat. Go ahead and just detach the throat. Look at this. We got our hook back. That's the hook we're using. Take your hands and just scrape out any type of like these little just any type of skin stuff, fascia, blood, whatever's in there that doesn't look very edible. You can just like kind of scratch it out, pull it out so it's nice and clean. All right, follow me over here. If you have a running hose, it makes it a lot easier. I usually like to open his mouth because sometimes the fish are sitting on ice, they get a little slimy. I'll stick the hose in his mouth, stick it in his gills, his gut cavity, and just really rinse them off really good. There we go. Bring him back over to your table. Alright, so now that he's all rinsed down, this is actually a handy dandy descaler that one of you guys sent us. Super cool and it works great. I've used it a few times already. It has like this little, I don't even know what to call it. I guess a, the descaler and then there's an opening so all the scales go in here. That way I don't have fish scales all over my mom's driveway. It'd be a compartment. Yeah. Super easy. You're going to go against the scales and descale the fish. Because you do not want to eat a scale when you're eating a fish hole. You want to make sure you get under his belly, near all these fins, near the pec fin, the top of the head right here. You can eat the skin of the fish. It's actually pretty good for you. But you want to make sure you get all them scales because it sucks when you go to take a bite and you got a big old scale in your mouth. His throat. Don't forget his throat. There's scales on the throat. So you're going to do this to both sides of the fish. Another thing to watch out for when you're descaling that fish, and I do it every single time. It doesn't matter. I do it every time. You're going in reverse on the scales, but you cannot forget his pec fin because those spikes right there, yeah, they hurt. Goes through the glove and my fingers toast. <laughs> they poke me so hard. Every time I do it, I'm like, 
every time. All right, take him back to the hose. There's only gonna be a few scales in the driveway. Oh, perfect. And there you have it. Your fish is ready to be cooked whole. This is actually gonna be kind of a three day video because as you can see behind me, all my stuff's in this U-Haul right here because tomorrow I'm closing in my house and I'm moving in. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Lowe's, buy a grill, and we're gonna cook this thing. First fish cooked on the grill at the new house. So I'm super stoked. You guys are gonna be there. Really, it's tomorrow, but it's gonna be like right now. Okay. Oh, sit. Are you ready for some mangrove snapper? So funny story about a lemon and Finley. When he was like three months old, <laughs> sit, sit. Good boy. When he was three months old, I had him at a restaurant and they give you like the lemons in the water. And I was expecting to film this like hilarious video of Finley reacting to a lemon. It turns out he just loved it. All right, let's see if he still loves lemons. Come here, Finley. You want it? Uh oh. Come here. Uh oh, I don't think he likes it anymore. <laughs> Come here, Finley. Oh, Come here. It's your lemon. That's your lemon. Remember you loved him. He's not too sure about it anymore. <laughs> Finley. Do you not like them anymore? Are you growling at it? Oh. I don't think he likes them. <laughs> Finley. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, needless to say, I don't think Finley likes lemons anymore. That's pretty funny. So we're gonna go ahead and start dressing this mangrove snapper. I just went out to Home Depot today, bought myself a nice Traeger grill. We're gonna throw it on the grill and I cannot wait to eat this fish. We have been, we as in me, my dad, my brother, have been busting our butts. You didn't want the lemon, now he's crying. <laughs> It's okay. You enjoy playing with it. I know. He's like, wait, well, you took it away from me. Oh. We have been busting our butts <laughs> to move into my new house. And once I get it a little more put together at the next oh. video, you guys will see. You guys will see more of the house. But right now, we're going to get to dressing this mangrove snapper. All right, first things first is we have some olive oil. We're going to lather this fish up in olive oil. You can use some butter too, but I'm just going to use some olive oil. Get in that belly. Flip that fish over. I gave Finley a bone and he's like running around the house trying to figure out where to, where to hide the bone. Get his cheeks. Maybe I felt the scale. His throat. So the throat of the fish is actually kind of like the dark meat of the fish. You know how there's white meat and dark meat to chicken? Well, the fish, the fillets would be considered the white meat and the throat would be considered the dark meat. All right, should be enough. We're gonna take some thyme. We're gonna shove it up in the body cavity here. We have some rosemary as well we're gonna shove in there. We have a lemon, an orange, got some lime. We got all the citrus going up in here. I went ahead and minced some fresh garlic that we are going to <clears throat> stuff in between the cuts on the fish, which I went ahead and scored the fish already. When you score a fish, that's what that means when you score a fish. You just put some slices in it that way it cooks a little better and you can kind of stop it with your seasonings, whatever you'd like to season your fish with. I think there's a cut on my finger from fishing the other day <laughs> and that does not match well with the lemon and garlic. I'm gonna flip him over. Put some more garlic on this side. There we go. Wash the hands. 
don't know if it's just me, but every time I cook or anything, I'm always washing my fingertips, washing my fingertips, washing my fingertips, if I get anything on them. All right, so I have some garlic and herb seasoning I'm gonna use. So the other side of the fish, I went really heavy with the garlic. So then I added some more garlic seasoning on this side, along with some salt. Which you can always add salt after the fish is cooked as well. We're just gonna dress this fish and make it look pretty with some citrus on top. I never used orange before, but I thought it was a nice touch, you know? Maybe a little sweetness to it. My knife go. There it is. <laughs> Cut this orange in half, it's kind of big. And one more little dollop of olive oil. A little more. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this fish up in aluminum foil. Normally, if I had scissors, which I don't have scissors because I'm in the middle of move me. Finley is obnoxiously, 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 obnoxious. obnoxiously chewing on his bone right now behind the camera. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this fish up. Normally I would take shears and I would cut the fins off just to make the fish a little smaller to fit and wrap a little more nicely, but I'm in the middle of moving and I don't know where scissors even exist right now. So we're gonna wrap him up very tight as we can. That way none of those juices drip off the aluminum foil. And we're gonna throw them on the grill at 375, probably for about 25 minutes to 35 minutes, just depending. Then he's gonna be ready to eat. Oh yeah, just like that. Cooked to absolute perfection. I'm gonna go ahead and take in some of these juices and the olive oil and just kind of pour it over the fish here. There we go. All right, so I went ahead and got some crackers. We got some fish. We got our nice um, redneck utensils here because I don't have utensils yet. And we're gonna let dad dig into this fish first. So take your cracker of choice without dropping it. And go ahead and get that fork and dig right in. It is flaking absolutely perfectly. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I've been waiting for this for like three days. Yeah, just gotta put the whole thing in your mouth. <clears throat> Good stuff. Oh yeah. Look at this. This cheek right here. I already, honestly, if you can't tell, I already kind of had a bite of the cheek before I started filming, not gonna lie. I was gonna go there, but I see somebody <laughs> was already there. We got the other cheek. Oh my gosh. So, the Traeger grill, so I cooked a trigger fish on the Traeger once and I wrapped it completely in aluminum foil and it cooked fine, but I think because this fish is a lot more thicker, peeling that skin off, you can actually eat the skin too. Um, it took like forever to cook. Like I kept checking on it like 20, 30, 40 minutes later, not really thinking about how it's like a smoker grill. <clears throat> so it cooks with the smoke and it didn't get hot enough. So I went ahead and threw it in the oven for a little bit um, just to finish cooking it faster because I got a lot of stuff I got to do today. But needless to say, and you guys can see it right here, it came out perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and enjoy this dinner so excited to eat this because it's been a long time since I've actually, since I've really eaten like good quality fresh fish. So we're gonna eat. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys check out the Southern Fortune Fishing Tournament. I'll put everything you need to know in the link below this video. Now you can sign up for registration now, but it won't be until next year, which I believe the tournament starts in August and it's a year August to August. If I'm corrected, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen here but you guys check that out. I will be joining the tournament as well. So if y'all wanna go up against me, go ahead and join the tournament. But for right now, this is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. It was a blast fishing offshore with the whole crew. 
Thanks dad for helping me move. Thank you Tyler for helping me move. And I have a big couple days ahead of me too. I gotta get my chickens back over here, get all my stuff organized. So needless to say, I'm going to be very busy the next couple days, but thank you guys for subscribing, watching, commenting, viewing, watching this video, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. You took my closing.